southeastern Turkey. Buried beneath 20 feet of sand, archaeologists unearthed the world's oldest temple complex, Gobekli Tepe. Radiocarbon dating suggests that the site dates back to at least the 10th century BC, a time before the end of the last ice age and 6,000 years before prehistoric man was said to have developed language. Gebekli Tepe is really one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. There are very few finds in archaeology that really change the whole way we look at the past, and that is essentially what has happened, because our view of hunter-gatherers uh, has changed enormously. We now know they were capable of coming together in large numbers with under presumably some kind of authority to cooperate on massive projects such as Gobekli Tepe, which involved bringing huge pieces of stone from quite some distance away, carving it beautifully, setting these pillars upright, and doing this on a massive scale. The very first temples in the world are at Gobekli Tepe. Um, and this, in many ways, changes everything, because here we have the smoking gun of a lost civilization. It confirms to us absolutely that at the end of the last ice age, there was high culture existing in the world. There's no doubt in my mind that there are question marks all around the ancient world. And Gobekli Tepe offers such a giant question mark because according to mainstream science, we were sitting in caves munching on bananas. And clearly that isn't the case. It's very difficult to know what the purpose of something like Gobekli Tepe could be. And certainly Klaus Schmidt had not reached any conclusions, except that it's clearly not a settlement, it's not a village. There is absolutely no domestic refuse. Schmidt always hoped that it was funerary and that there would be burials underneath the walls or underneath some of the pillars or so on, but so far they have not yet found any human remains at the site. There are no domestic plants in the site. There are only wild animal bones. Inevitably, in archaeology, if we don't know what something is for, we think of ritual. But uh, really, it, it's pure speculation. Intrigued by evidence that the structure might go back to a Neolithic period, Klaus Schmidt has the sediment layers of the site radiocarbon dated. The results indicated that the stone structures could be as much as 12,000 years old more than 5,000 years older than mankind's first known civilization in Mesopotamia. More than that, it would place the construction of Gobekli Tepe to a time when mainstream scholars suggest humans were roaming the earth as hunter-gatherers. Well, the site of Gobekli Tepe really did send shockwaves through the whole world of early prehistory because we'd never before known or imagined even that simple hunter-gatherers could produce such spectacular monumental structures. Now in archaeology, really since it began, we've always assumed that hunter-gatherers were capable of producing wonderful works of art, rock art, cave art and things like that, but we never imagined that they could come together in sufficient numbers uh, to make uh, monumental constructions like Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe could be the smoking gun of a lost civilization because it confirms that at the time of the last ice age, there was high culture existing in the world. This is something that had been speculated for many years, but there had not been the absolute evidence. Now we could have it. This engineering skills, this ordering of society is something that must have existed before the end of the last ice age. And arguably even earlier. When you look at the time frame of Gobekli Tepe, it was built right after these huge catastrophes at the end of the last ice age. And it would seem that the builders were people who had survived and had the knowledge and technology to build something like this. More than one-third of the statues contain elaborate carvings of animals, including various mammals, reptiles, insects, and birds. But also included are depictions of species not indigenous to the area, like geese, armadillos, 
and wild boar. There are such an incredible range of animals and birds and insects depicted at Gobekli Tepe, the like of which we have never seen at that period anywhere else in the world. And to have a whole bunch of them together is interesting. You can speculate till the cows come home as to what it might represent. We have not the faintest idea. In the story of Noah's Ark, we're told that after the deluge, Noah's Ark lands at Mount Ararat in eastern Turkey, not far from Gobekli Tepe, and we see some very strange animals portrayed on the pillars at Gobekli Tepe, almost as if it's a record of Noah's Ark itself. Perhaps Gobekli Tepe is the place where Noah and his descendants disembarked and recreated civilization after the flood. If there really is a connection between Gobekli Tepe and the biblical story of a great flood, could the carvings found at the site be an inventory of the animals that were rescued? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes, but also suggest other carvings depict a species not of this earth. At the center of each of the five megalithic ring structures that occupy the archaeological site stand two oversized monolithic pillars, weighing up to 20 tons and reaching heights of over two stories. They visually stand apart from the T-shaped stonework that surrounds them. These pillars are anthropomorphic. They are human-like in appearance. They have low-relief arms that come round to the front and end in these long, spindly fingers. They wear garments. They have belts with strange symbols. There are no faces on these stones. The heads are represented by T-shaped terminations that look almost like hammerheads, basically. They could be gods, they could be ancestors, or they could be very specific people who are being venerated. We really have no idea. With the stone circles at Gobekli Tepe, they weren't just building them and covering them over for ritualistic purposes, but actually they were doing this for what we might call scientific purposes. Clearly, there was something very important about the constellation of Cygnus, something that made these people want to track its course over a period of perhaps 1,500 years. Legends of gods descending from the stars in the Cygnus constellation can be found in traditions across the globe. In the Mandean teachings of ancient Persia, the throne room of the great god Abathar Mazania was said to be the Cygnus constellation. In the Egyptian tradition, the goddess of the night sky, Nuit, was said to have come directly from Cygnus. And in the Mayan tradition, it was said that the sun god, Kinegahau, descended from there. We have major deities coming from the Cygnus constellation. If I were to be a visitor from another planet and I wanted to leave behind a calling card indicating where I came from, then I would build structures with the precise alignment of a constellation of my home star system. So perhaps the teachers who were at Gobekli Tepe came from Cygnus. Is it possible that the builders of Gobekli Tepe were pointing to the place where their extraterrestrial teachers came from by aligning the site to that specific location in the night sky? In 2015, NASA officials announced a curious phenomenon picked up by the Kepler Space Telescope. It was reported that a mysterious dimming and flickering was coming from a star in the Cygnus constellation. And some scientists claim this might be caused by an alien megastructure passing in front of it. NASA announced that they were tracking what they called an alien megastructure around the star of Cygnus. Archaeologists still have much to learn about the site. 
But as it becomes dangerously close to suffering the same fate as other sites in the region, could its most profound secrets be lost forever? Is it possible that the Gebekli Tepe builders were actually sending us a message? Yes, the stones seem to suggest that this was the case. Perhaps they were giving us some kind of warning, or it could be that they are trying to tell us the information that they knew about celestial beings, and perhaps even extraterrestrials from the Cygnus constellation. Gebekli Tepe goes back to a earlier cycle of civilization that existed at the end of the last ice age. They experienced catastrophic changes. So I am of the opinion that there's a very important message that maybe they were purposefully sending to us. At least they were trying to preserve for posterity, for future generations. And we need to figure out exactly what that message is. Gobekli Tepe points us back to our origins and points directly to the stars as the source of where we came from. Once we accept this, we will be able to answer the questions of where we came from and ultimately where we're going as a species.